A Small Hick Town, Ugly Ground Dwelling Monsters, and Kevin Bacon Simping for a Woman Who Works Well with Poles. This is Popcorn Recap, and today we get to unearth a classic 1990 monster comedy film called Tremors. Two average moots in an isolated Nevada town called Perfection try to escape in an attempt to live a better life, but are quickly stopped when they find multiple horrors and dead bodies along the way caused by eyeless underground creatures. Valentine, Val McKee, is introduced in a charming fashion, pissing over the side of a cliff. He proceeds to scratch his ass as he walks over to the back of a truck where his older brother Earl is out cold. Like the good younger brother he is, he scares Earl into thinking there's a stampede, and Earl rolls out the truck in a panic. The two freshen up and light a cigarette together first thing in the morning. After arguing who made breakfast last, the brothers start the day doing various odd jobs around their small Nevada town. Earl yearns for something better than their average, low-ball life working as hired hands. Val has no issue with it. As they drive, Val spots a new grad student out in a field. Realizing it's supposed to be a girl, he speeds down the field. However, Val is left disappointed when he meets a plain woman named Rhonda Lebec instead of the long-legged blonde girl he was hoping for. Rhonda introduces herself and reveals she's conducting seismology tests in the area. She says the readings have been strange lately, but learns that no one's been doing any drilling or digging in the town. As they drive off, Earl proposes they help study the seismographs for her, in an attempt to encourage his deflated younger brother to date Rhonda. This isn't well received, however, as Val only dates vain and superficial women. He calls himself a victim of circumstance, but really, this is just his pecker. Rhonda continues with her tests out in the field, where something starts to move underground. She's completely unaware of this and hops into her car. After Earl and Val work their sanitary jobs of picking up garbage and a septic pump job gone wrong, they pack up their belongings and head over for the next town named Bixby. They even turn down free beer, so you know it's serious. But their journey quickly comes to a halt when they recognize another man asleep on top of an electrical tower. Val is in for a surprise when he climbs up to get him and realizes that the man is dead, grasping a rifle in one hand. Their town doctor announces that the man has died from thirst, too scared to climb down for three days. Val and Earl try to drive away once more, apparently not giving a shit about the horrors they've just witnessed. Karma's a bitch though, and they find their local farmer Fred and his flock of sheep mangled and dead. The brothers come across the farmer's severed head and are convinced there's a serial killer. Some construction workers further down the road ignore Val and Earl's warning and are killed by the same unseen creature, causing a rock slide. Val and Earl head back to town to try and call for help. With the phones dead, the two are urged to leave for Bixby where they can find a working phone line instead. And this is why you should never live in a random ditch in Nevada. The men try to get the hell out of Dodge for the third or fourth time, only to be stopped by the rock slide from earlier. They freak out when they see a sludge of blood. They attempt to drive away but find themselves stuck for some reason. They later realize a gigantic worm creature had attached itself underneath their truck and had been stalling it. Personally, I've seen prettier things crawl out of a rotting ass. Later that night, the doctor from earlier, along with his wife, are working and building their new home together outside. Yeah, I bet you could figure what's gonna happen next. It's unfortunate, but the happy couple are quickly eaten and pulled underneath the ground. A heartwarming ending indeed. With the residents of Perfection having no way to call for help or make it past the rock slide, they urge Val and Earl to borrow some horses and ride their way to Bixby instead. It's a surprise anyone gets anything done in this town without the help of these two. Imagine just trying to leave your deadbeat town only for it to be slowly filled with dead people. Val and Earl try to look for the doctor to give him an update on their rock clutch road, but quickly learn the graboids have killed him and his wife as well, along with dragging their entire car underneath. Their horses are eaten by some angry carnivorous worm monsters, and they're shortly chased after a mother graboid. They unintentionally kill the gigantic burrowing worm creature when it crashes through the concrete wall of an aqueduct, having died trying to chase them. Rhonda stumbles onto the scene. Oblivious at first, they pry the monster out and are horrified when they see just how big it is. Rhonda realizes it's the same creature tripping her seismic sensors and panics when she deduces from previous readings that there are three other worms in the area. As Rhonda, Val, and Earl get on the move to warn the others, they detect the presence of more creatures. They run for cover to stay on top of some boulders. They try to leave but learn that the creatures hunt for their prey by detecting seismic vibrations. And these brilliant nitwits are standing on top of a bunch of rocks, the perfect conductor for said vibrations. We get some nice fluffy romance amidst the gross worm action for once when Rhonda and Val fall asleep next to each other. Earl smirks to himself when Rhonda realizes Val covered her with his jacket during the night. After spending the night sleeping on the rocks, the boys argue on how best to escape the worms. 
Rhonda outsmarts them both by using discarded poles to pole vault over nearby boulders. Val finds himself increasingly more attracted to a woman who knows how to work a pole. Following her lead, the boys take some pole lessons from Rhonda and pole vault over to the boulder, safely reaching her truck. The worms follow them back to the general goods store and try to attack. In the middle of the chaos, Val runs out to save an idiotic child in a pogo stick, inadvertently attracting the worms, and deprives the graboids of a free Happy Meal. Rhonda gets her pants stuck on some barbed wire, and is forced to wiggle out of her pants to get free. Wouldn't be a cheesy horror movie until we had a dumb excuse to get a woman naked now, wouldn't we? They try to hide inside the general goods store owned by Asian Walter Chang. The icebox switches on on its own, and the vibration of electricity attracts the graboids, causing them to rip through the floorboards. Our funny Asian character is unfortunately eaten, and the remaining people are forced to hide out on the rooftop. Prepper couple Bert and Heather Gummer unwittingly draw Graboid back to their basement armory, but manage to earn themselves a dehydrated sausage kill with the use of their various weapons. In the isolated town of Perfection, the remaining Grabbies loosen up the foundation of the buildings from underneath. Somehow, these dehydrated sausages are smarter than some people I know. The dazed idiots finally realize how vital it is for their survival that they leave Perfection. Earl, Rhonda, and some token Mexican distract the Grabby Grabbies by letting a nearby tractor run loose on its own. With a decoy tractor running wild, Val makes a run for it in an attempt to reach the bulldozer. The land sharks are hot as heels when Rhonda orders him to stay still, confusing the Graboids when they're suddenly unable to detect Val. Rhonda kicks over a pipe with running water to distract them further. Val manages to get into the bulldozer and chains the semi-trailer to the rear. What's left of the survivors climb onto it to try and escape to the nearby mountains. As they ride, the hungry, hungry Jimbos outsmart our poor protagonists. The Graboids create a sinkhole trap ahead of them, to which their vehicle inevitably falls into. Rhonda acts as the only one with a brain in the group and convinces Bert to make use of his homemade bombs as they run to some conveniently placed boulders for safety. Earl steps up. He urges that they lure the Graboids and trick them into eating some of Bert's homemade pipe bombs. Not every day you see the heroes win by fooling some dehydrated earthworm gems into swallowing their explosive load. A Graboid opens wide for a load. The last one, unfortunately, gets smart. Realizing its spicy leftovers were fighting it back, the remaining Graboid throws the bomb back towards them. The survivors are forced to scatter when the bomb comes flying and destroying their leftover bombs except for one. With only one bomb left, Valor is the final Graboid away from the survivors on the rocks. They trick the worm into chasing them to the edge of a cliff. The Graboid rushes towards them ravenously, and Val jumps at the last second. The worm plummets to its death on the rocks below and turns into a terrible mess of tomato stew. Yeah, this really isn't the film to watch while you're eating hot dogs with ketchup. The remaining survivors return to the town. They finally manage to call in for help and to start an investigation on their newfound discovery. Val and Earl get ready to leave for Bixby again, and Rhonda tries to wish them goodbye. But Val chickens out and gets too nervous. After a few seconds of buffering, his brain finally kicks into gear, and Val runs after Rhonda to give her a kiss. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.